Exciting stuff going on. We got these baptisms taking place. How many of you have been baptized in the river? Okay, quite a few of you. How many of you are baptized in a pool? A hot tub? A hot tub in a church? A horse trough? Yes, like, and those aren't just people that grew up on a farm. Like, that's literally what we use here on Sundays is a horse trough. So, but it's gonna be awesome. And so, hey, if you want to take that step of being baptized, maybe you're baptized as a baby or as a kid, we would love for you to take the step, as the Bible talks about, is being baptized as a believer, okay? Maybe somebody else made that decision for you, but if you are a follower of Jesus, then taking that step of baptism is huge because it's an act of obedience. And so on the next step card, you can let us know whether it's the 7th, the 21st, or it may be another time if those dates don't work, but we can start getting you the resource and information around that. So let us know. Additionally, on the next step card, there's lots of different things. If you happen to be a guest here, we would love to hear from you. It's our opportunity to get to know you. You could either turn this in in the next step box at each of the exits or stop by the info center. We have a gift for you and we can help you with, you know, maybe connecting here at Rock Harbor or anything within this community as a whole. We would love to be able to uh, just get to know you. And so stop by there. I'm not gonna mention next steps towards the end of the message because of how we kind of have designed the service with a couple of different things going, but there are some things that are taking place at church. And so whether you're tuned in online, um, or you're on the app, or you're in person, we always say it's every Sunday is the opportunity to take that next step. Uh, today is amazing because we get to send out a church. Like we're getting rid of people for God. Um, <laughs> No, we are very excited. We are commissioning and sending out Redeemer Church. Uh, what, yeah, I think you wanted to clap. I interrupted you. <clears throat> so we are fully funding and then equipping with people a church plant that's going on uh, just down the hill in Eagle, Idaho, okay? They're meeting at the high school, and they've been having some of their vision meetings, and they're getting ready to move into the soft launch. But on September 18th, they will have their first services there at the high school. And so we are excited about that. And so today is a commissioning. This is where we pray over and we send out and we speak um, just encouragement. And then it's done so in a way that's peaceful. This isn't like, hey, there's a problem. We're getting rid of a few people, okay? Um, this is uh, an opportunity for us to just send out an independent church that God has been moving in hearts for quite some time to take place, but it's not just the links and the Duttons. There's a group of people that have either have come from Rock Harbor or got connected over a period of time in the community uh, to what God is doing. And so they've been gathering, and um, we're excited to be able to be part of this. Um, it's grieving because there's a piece of this. Like, this isn't like, oh, these are underperforming pastors. Uh, we need to move them on to their next place. Uh, this wasn't their contract was up, and now they're free agents. No, this is. But they are called out by God to do this. But it's not easy. And that's how loving and leading is. Loving and leading is always right, but it's not always easy. Acts 2, 42 through 47 talks about how they gathered house to house and they met as a body, but they were devoted to one another. Proscartario. They were committed. They were persistent and they were committed to one another. That's what the church is supposed to be, dedicated because we live in a day and time where dedication is like, hey, I'll be there probably. Like, hey, you can totally count on me, maybe. Here's the thing. We are called by scripture to be devoted to the making of disciples, and devoted to the church body as a whole. But what we see is church often comes, turns into like, hey, where do you attend? Uh, I go there because they have these different things. In fact, church attendance, not just in the last two years, but over a period of time has drastically changed, has drastically changed where it, church becomes a place that you go to rather than a person that maybe you are or a body that we're supposed to be. There was a survey that was done that interviewed people on what kind of church or what are you looking for in a church that you would like to attend. And so people say things like this. Hey, I would attend there if, if they've got a good service. Uh, I would attend there if they have multiple ministries that will meet the needs of my family. I would think about attending a place if, if, if there's a creative and a relevant message from the pastor. Uh, I would attend a place based on their style of music. I'm looking for people that I could relate to. I want the church 
Big, but not too big. Small, but not too small. I'm looking for a place with good parking. I'm looking for a place with a clean facility. You know, I'd really like some coffee. And child care would be probably at the top of my list. Other than what's probably at the top is where the pastor doesn't talk too much about money. That's what the survey said people are looking for in a church they would like to attend. But here's the problem. Here are the biblical commands of a church. This is the biblical commands for what the church is supposed to be. A place where God's word is taught. We observe the teachings of Jesus. Loving one another, bearing one another's burdens, making disciples, planting churches, visiting orphans and widows, not forsaking of the gathering of us as a body together. Sacrifice, being generous, and then meeting one another's needs. Admonishing one another, sometimes redirecting one another and praying for one another. Now that sounds like, okay, that's biblical. That's what we're supposed to be. Now I would attend if these things work for me, but this is what I'm supposed to be in that body. But here's the reality. What would we be more upset about if it didn't have list number one or list number two? It's kind of sad. We would like to say list number two, but the reality is, is we're looking for something that will minister or meet our need. When in reality, as devoted followers of Jesus, we're to meet the needs of this body. Make disciples that make disciples. Like if Rock Harbor was put on trial, it wouldn't be like, hey, you know, here's the evidence. You guys did a really good job of gathering together. Uh, you did a really good job of providing and making, trying to make as many people happy as possible. Our goal is not happiness. Our goal is holiness. So what does that mean? Like, yeah, we've got to preach tough things. We've got to study God's word fully. We need to be corrected and redirected. See, we're all going to be on trial someday. We're all going to give an answer before God on what we did for him. What kind of an eternal impact did our life make? And it begins with making disciples. So my prayer is that we would truly love and lead. We would make sacrifices for one another. We wouldn't just attend a service that's the most convenient for us. No, we would make a sacrifice. We would serve one another and do so with gladness. We would give generously to the church body, just like scripture says, even more so to the household of faith. We would see a need and we'd meet that need. We'd serve radically. We wouldn't just serve in what worked best in our schedule or say, hey, I need to take a break from that. We would look at community groups and say, we have to be in community with one another, not just coming and maybe attending one time or maybe maybe two times a month. No, just like scripture, we wouldn't forsake this assembling of ourselves together even more so as we see the day approaching, Hebrews 10. That's our prayer. That's my prayer for us as a body. And we've been studying through Acts, and throughout the book of Acts, you see this, this sending off. You know, we've been in Acts for tw- uh, 52 weeks 52. We'll be done at about 55. So if you're counting it down, you know, like the little chain going to Christmas or Advent or something like that, there's three little links on that chain left. We're getting there. And it ends abruptly. It's kind of interesting. It just like, just ends. I think that's what a sound makes when you end something. It just goes, you know? So, but you see this um, picture of a commissioning. You know, we read in scripture and it talks about go therefore into All nations teaching God's word, teaching them to obey all that he's commanded us, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he's gonna be with us always. This is the great commission we're given by God. We are being commissioned. We're gonna commission a church. This word commission comes from apostelo, which means to send forth or to send away. And throughout Acts, probably a dozen times, they prayed over them and sent them. They prayed over them and sent them. They sent them out two by two. They sent them with a group of people. Acts 15 really spells this out for us. And we studied it months ago, probably right about the first of this year. But it says in Acts 15, verse number 30, so when they were sent off, they went down to Antioch and having gathered the congregation together, they delivered the letter. We talk often, gather, scatter, matter. This is the gathering. 
This is they gathered together. The congregation, they gathered together. We create gathering environments all throughout this church. That's what the church is to do. That's what's in this room. This is a gathering environment, whether online, in person, whether on a podcast, whether on a video, whether looking with you. We are gathering together. To, to Think about Anchor. Same thing, Wednesday night, they gather together. Slingshot tonight, 4 o'clock, gather together. The porch, Tuesday night, 7, they gather together. It's a lar- Our kids, every service, gather. Large environment. Teaching is done. Singing to what? Scatter. The next is scatter, verse 31. When they heard it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. And Judas, good Judas, not the bad Judas, good Judas and Silas, who were themselves um, prophets, encouraged and strengthened the brothers with many words. They preached, they taught, they brought an encouragement through their words. They talked and, and called them up into and brought strength to them through discipleship. And after they had spent some time, they were sent off in peace by brothers to those who had sent them. It was a peaceful thing. This wasn't like, we're sending you off because there's a division. No, we're sending off in joy, but also in grief. Because there's great work to be done. This is the scattering. Large environment scattering into community groups. Scattering into connections, small group with one another. Doing life with one another. Studying the word talking about how it applies and what this looks like and truly praying for one another, meeting one another's needs. If you're not in community, you're not in a group, I will just tell you, you're not allowing the ministry of Rock Harbor to fully benefit, bless, and encourage you. Because it's not just about gathering. We're to gather, yes, more so even as the day approaches, but we're also to scatter into a discipleship deeper Relationship, not just for fellowship and hangs, no, for life on life, praying over and with one another. Verse 35, but Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. So one went to teach and preach the word of the Lord, and then Paul and Barnabas stayed here and went here to preach and teach the word of the Lord. That's the mattering. What matters? God's word. What matters? Applying God's word. So when you hear us say gather, scatter, matter, Matter is that scientific word like mass or weight. You want what you do to have an eternal impact, to have weight, to make a difference with your life. I'm not just gonna gather and be one of many. I'm gonna scatter into a smaller environment and then me, myself, I'm going to own the calling of being a disciple that makes a disciple. And I want to matter. I want to have weight making a difference eternally. See, all that matters in this life is what we're doing for eternity. So we can't just gather and be like, hey, I'm part of a church, I attend. Oh, scatter, yeah, I kind of did this group this one time, but yeah, my schedule and stuff, and how are you investing in the lives of people? That's what mattering looks like. What a picture, and what matters, God's word. That's why we look at Isaiah 55, and it talks about God's word not returning void. Maybe that's how you've heard it. So shall be my word that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. It says that they ministered, they preached, and they taught. They applied the word of God. Nothing matters greater than our application of God's word. It says, you want to be successful? You want to have a guarantee? You want to know for which it accomplishes it, for which there's a purpose. You want something in your life to not return empty. Like a guarantee upon investment, God's word's just that. In his word, living out his word, sharing his word. That's what matters most. What does God's word say? Make disciples that make disciples. Plant churches that plant churches. Healthy churches plant churches. And we've asked for a very long time here at Rock Harbor, what is our next step. God, what do you want us to do? I remember in 2015, we had three services, and we're going, man, we had no idea. Like, we were even gonna go to four and have an 815. The 830 service is like, I love God the most. I'm like, you love God, but 815, love God more. I mean, 815 in a high school. We had to be there at five something to set up and clean and just get everything ready to create a great gathering environment. 
not knowing what God was doing. So we were asking ourselves, does God want us to plant another location? We planted a multi-site. We had a venue where we met at the hub, another gathering place. We've always said, God, what do you want from us? Do you want us to create another location for Rock Harbor? Or do you want us to plant an independent church? Redeemer, we are fully funding and fully sending out with volunteers and people engaged. They had 170 at their last meeting, and they've been growing and seeing this. You throw kids in the mix, oh, it's going to be chaos and awesome all at the same time. But we're watching this take place. To truly do ministry, to truly meet the needs of one another. What is the next step for us as a church? Back in 2016, we didn't realize it was going to be to buy this property and send out Stonehill Church. In 2016, we sent out Stonehill Church, and what a blessing it was. Doug and Heather Connolly, that's my wife, and I, and then, you know, I look at that picture. Doug texted me this morning. He was like, Keith, I just want to let you know you're the greatest influence in my life. I love you. I'm praying for you during your message today. Yeah, he didn't say that. He just like, hey, you want to go golfing? That was what it was, actually. Um, and I said, yeah, I like tomorrow afternoon. It's only going to be like 104. And he said, I would like to, but it's not going to work out. I guess God doesn't care, you know, about our relationship. And so it didn't work out. But great friends, Stonehill Church meets at Mountain View High School. Absolutely love what God is doing in their ministry. But it's a church plant we were able to fully send out with people and resources and finances to get all of the portable equipment, everything that goes along with planting a church. And now, 2022, we get to send out Redeemer Church, another opportunity, independent church that we are sending out. John was one of our elders. Uh, Travis was uh, a pastor in our high school ministry. They both served here for five and six years. John was an elder, then came on staff. We hired him away from, uh, you know, being a physical therapist. We're like, that's unsuccessful. You're not doing a good job anyways. I don't trust you. Um, But come care for people's souls. That's kind of how I sold it to him. Um, But to be able to bring uh, them to our team and them to serve so faithfully for so long, it's such a, just a beautiful picture. See, there's some foundations that we should have in church planning. We've said this from the very beginning as a church, that we want to be blessed by the way we pray and what we give away. That we're praying to God for the most, like, incredible, more than we could ever ask, think, or imagine. And we want to be generous and have open hands in doing so. To have four staff members go, to have dozens and dozens and dozens of Rock Harbor families, like, it's just grieving. But it's right. Loving and leading is not always easy, but it's right. To be blessed by the way that we pray and what we give away. To really gain in eternity, even though we might feel like we lose a little bit in the now, to really trust God in that. What we keep is what we have, but what we give, God multiplies. We really have to let go in order to grow. And this is the gospel going into a much needed community. The gospel is much needed in this community. And so to see this multiply, it's an incredible blessing. To be a healthy church that plants a healthy church, that's truly the goal. So I would like to invite the pastors of Redeemer out, John Link and Travis Dutton. Can we welcome them to the stage? So there's lots of emotions that go along um, with even just this moment right now because you guys are dear friends and more than, you know, co-laborers. But when you're like in the trench of hard things in life, um, you guys have been just great personal friends to me. Um, Thinking about the opportunity that we have to do what we're doing in the same city Like, you guys didn't have to sell your houses. If you would have, you made money. That'd be awesome. Um, uh, But then you wouldn't have a place to live, which gets weird. Um, uh, But you can rent mine. Um, So I'll rip you off. Uh, But anyways, back to God. Um, But throughout Acts, you see, like, them sending out. And it's a beautiful thing. It's this thing where, like, they're doing ministry together. You see this discipleship. And their lives were literally on the line as they did ministry in the early church, and to know, like, my life, I'm not going to die, like, for my faith, right, like, today in the parking lot, you know, but there's this piece of me that, like, there's a, a dying of 
what I know and love and how we've been able to co-labor together on a daily basis. But I also know like we're gonna, there's gonna come a day where we're gonna get to plant churches together. There's coming a day where we're going to be able to minister in different ways and the relationship just changes a little. And um, looking at, we looked earlier in Acts 15, but also in Acts 12, it shares about another sending out that takes place. And, and I'm taking some liberty here to kind of share some of the context of that. And so I'm changing scripture. Some liberty. Some liberty. I'm gonna change scripture so it's applicable, okay? So don't be like, oh, I'm going to Redeemer because Keith like, totally changed his God word. Like, you need to learn to not take yourself so seriously, okay, if that's you. So I was just looking at this and going, you know, what, how could I contextualize some of this to us? So it was like now there were in Rock Harbor Church at... Uh, uh, in Meridian, uh, there were prophets and teachers, uh, Keith and Harrop, who was called Scott, um, Elliot of uh, John, uh, Nolan, a lifelong friend of uh, Dutton the Travis, and uh, Link of the John. Um, Travis, they, you're Herod. <laughs> while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work in which I've called them. Well, I wouldn't say Barnabas and Saul. I would say John and Travis. It's just beautiful to see that. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So being sent off by the Holy Spirit, they went down chin and the lender. And then from there... <laughs> From there, they crossed the Boise River. They sailed to 83616. When they arrived at the northern part of Ada County, they proclaimed the word of God in the high school of the Eagleites. Yes. That was a beautiful exposition yeah. of scripture. Yes. And if you were offended, they are about ready to start meeting uh, soon. And so... But, you know, just seeing that and, and knowing, like when we look at Mark, uh, Mark, when Jesus was talking about how he sent out the disciples, it was two by two. In Mark 6, it says, um, I'm a couple pages off here, and they called the 12 and they began to send them out two by two. They gave them the authority over unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except the staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and to put on two tunics. I think it's awesome, as hard as it is to have two incredible families, to have two incredible leaders, it's right. Uh, the relationship that you guys have formed over the last many years. To see how God called and the Lord was moving in your heart, Travis, last year and going, how long is God gonna keep me in student ministry and what's that look like? And you were continuing to do more and more in adult ministries and preaching. And John, in December, when we were like, hey, what do you feel like God's doing? And your wife was praying at the exact same time while we were kind of doing a year-end conversation. And then Scott Harrop said, would you ever consider planning a church? And you're like, no, but my <laughs> wife will. Um, you know, <laughs> because uh, we knew that God was moving in your heart in some way. It wasn't what we were like, yes, but it was one of those like, it is so amazing to see the humility that it takes as you guys were going to school at the same time and just walking through that. Um, to see how you guys have led from preaching, how you've led at Rock Harbor, whether it be in student ministry or whether it be in all of the different adult ministries and marriage ministry, you guys have been really faithful. And John, when I think of the value if we have six of them at Rock Harbor, the one deeply rooted reminds me of you. Because when the winds and the rain come, like you're founded on the rock. And I remember when you moved here from Illinois and there was all that was going on and physical therapy and clinics and health of kids and past ministry. It was like, Lord, what do you want me to do? And when we came to you and said, hey, would you like to join our team? And you became an elder. And it was like, would you like to be vocational in ministry? And once again, you said, I don't, but my wife wants me to. <laughs> and so you accepted Harrop's invitation to join our team. And you've been incredibly faithful. It's because you have the foundation of God's word. It really does not return void. And so whenever Jesus said, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. When the rain fell and the floods came, the winds blew and beat on the house but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And I know even in these last few months of Redeemer, opposition comes, suffering comes, but you're founded on him and you've made that extremely evident in how you've led. And so to see that, you being a lead pastor and being a foundation, 
God has equipped you for such a time as this, and it comes down to your submittance to his word. So, yeah. So good. That was even better and more heartfelt than the first service. Yeah. So, I, yeah. yeah, the first service, I, was, yeah. I didn't really know what to say. It was kind of like awkward. Um, so, I understand. No. You're, you're, we're staring at each other for a little bit too Let's long just, here. So I'm going to look at you guys. I'm just going to go to the, you guys, back to you guys. But no, thank you, Keith. Those are some very, very kind words. And yeah, we're just uh, so excited and amazed to what God has been doing through Redeemer Church in just this short time in Eagle, Idaho. Um, just so encouraged by so many of you just taking steps of faith to really embark on this journey with us, and so thankful uh, for Rock Harbor's support. And many churches, they, they talk about uh, church planting. Maybe it's their beliefs or even aspirations, but um, very few churches actually do, and that's just the reality. But uh, just to be able to see two churches being planted out of Rock Harbor Church in six years, uh, that's nothing short of amazing. We get to see the kingdom of God uh, grow, and it really is a, a testament to uh, this man's faith, his heart, and his desire to see the fulfillment uh, of the Great Commission. And for that, Travis and I are just very, very grateful. And, you know, it's, it's hard because um, we not only lose our, our pastor, but, uh, you know, we, we, we don't lose our friendship, but just being able to be able to walk with each other every day, um, that's, that's going to be difficult. Um, and so, and that, that's just kind of one of those things that I've often said here at Rock Harbor Church, one of my favorite parts of working here is I get to go to work every day with some of my dear friends, and it's something very, very special here. And so, uh, it is hard to, to leave. It's a very emotional day. Haven't been here in a little bit, um, but the friendship uh, and just really, Keith, what you've meant to myself, Travis, and our families has been nothing short of amazing. I just want to give you a quick round of applause, and I know you hate it. Oh, It really is uh, a huge blessing um, yeah. to think about when Travis rolled on the scene, you know, from New Mexico, and uh, just your compassion. You have been compassionate. Uh, we call it sensitive sometimes, um, <laughs> you know, because, you know, there hasn't been but maybe one or two hundred times you've cried on the stage, um, and we've only been in the building like a year. And so, um, but just to see, like, you have an incredible heart for people. And it was evident from day one when you stepped uh, onto our team and the heart that you have and the way that you've taught and led to be someone after God's own heart. So when it says that Jesus went through the cities in Matthew 9, taught in the synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and affliction. But when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like a sheep without a shepherd you're real stinking, and you recognize needs, and you see people that have been harassed, you too. You were the kid that got invited to youth ministry back in the day, and God reached down and set you apart for a purpose, and then you have done that. And to see you minister not just to students, but to families, and to recognize needs. After a run-through of a message, you'll come and you'll say, hey, I know, say it this way, and you and I have some kindred spirit in a lot of the different things, and so... I'm really proud of you, and I'm, I'm grateful. I know you'll be an incredible comp, uh, compliment uh, for John in ministry. So, Well, thanks, Keith. And if you guys didn't know that about our kindred spirit, we also have a similar look, uh, beard and balding. But <laughs> this is I've the... been called Travis multiple times, and one time my wife put her arm around Travis, or almost did. I think, I think almost. She, almost <gasps> I was like, oh! Panic. And then she confessed it, made it right. We're good. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, no, but thank you for, for sharing those things, and, and thank you guys for allowing um, us uh, to be a part of your world and maybe your, your students' lives. Um, that's something that I don't take for granted, having three little boys. That's a, a big deal who gets to speak in their life, and so thank you for the past five years being able to step into that with many of you here. And Keith, you talk about um, oftentimes the name Rock Harbor. You, you always define it with two different ways. Do you, do you remember how you say that? Founded on a rock mm -hmm. and a safe place. In a safe place, yeah. And uh, Keith has shared a lot of times about this is a safe place for 
you know, maybe somebody to come in and then maybe the idea that the ship gets sent back out. And so that's something that I've tried to champion for a handful of years, not realizing that I would be one of those ships to get sent back out. And so it's been a sweet, sweet place, uh, a sweet season. And um, you've showed us, as John shared, what it looks like to, uh, to love the local church and to uh, desire unity within the church. And um, we have been loved and led well. And the hope is that we continue that. So thank you guys very much. Wow. Well, this journey hasn't been one without much prayer. Um, and so as a church, we've prayed. We shared with you guys in February. We had a conversation in December. And then prior to that, just elders always asking, God, what is it that you want us to do? Because the temptation is to keep what is comfortable. Um, but then to say, you know, it may be a sacrifice now, but eternity and glorifying God, even though there is some hard parts. Uh, there's a team of people that have surrounded you guys, a couple of which are your wives and um, elders. And so we want to invite a couple of our uh, elders or wives and then your wives out as well so we can have a time of praying, a time of commissioning where we lay hands upon and an opportunity for us to just really ask the Lord um, for his uh, perfect will. I'd prefer if you don't stand by Travis, honey. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, a commissioning um, is something where you send them out on mission. And on Tuesday, I was reading... And it was in First uh, Peter, uh, chapter one, verse uh, or chapter one, verse twenty-two. It says, "Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, for a sincere brotherly love, love one another, another earnestly from a pure heart, since you've been born again, not of a perishable seed, but imperishable, through the living and abiding Word of God." For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. And so, guys, uh, we have some gifts for you. Um, guys, we've got you a Bible, and girls, there's a card with something that you probably um, will really enjoy. It involves, like, pedicures and manicures and stuff and, and counseling. Um, so... Uh, <laughs> for that. Um, yeah. But um, it's a special Bible that um, is made of goat. And so, uh, yeah, I have an affinity goat for skin. goats. Yeah, goat skin. Yeah. Not, just goat. not just goat skin. Um, but uh, you guys value God's word and that seed that is imperishable, uh, that, that will outlast everything is what we lean towards. So we just want to take an opportunity to pray for you. have allowed us to be a part of. I thank you so much to be able to see um, the gospel go forth in this valley and such amazing people to lead the way for that. I thank you for John and Jen and Travis and Brittany and the friendship that we share with them and what a blessing they've been in our life and um, through Rock Harbor and being able to serve together, do life together, enjoy uh, leading and loving. I pray that you would just be with them on this special day as we are sending them out and commissioning them, I pray for a special anointing on them and their families as they lead their children, lead in their marriages, lead in this community and in the church. Lord, just bless them, give them wisdom, give them protection. Um, pray that you would just keep them from the enemy and the evil one and that you would just show them. I thank you for their sacrifice and service and their love for you and the passion that you've given them to uh, reach the valley with your gospel. We love you and just give this day to you. In your name I pray, amen. Father, what a special privilege to pray for dear friends who love you and who want to chase after you and do all that you would have them do. And we know, Father, that... Uh, John and Travis and Jen and Brittany represent and, and stand here as uh, representatives of so many other people who call Rock Harbor home and so many other people who are coming alongside who want to go on this journey. And so we pray for all of them, Father. We pray that you will go before them, that you will provide for them in miraculous ways. 
that in those moments when there is sadness and difficulty, that you will lift them up. In those moments, Father, when there is excitement and amazing things happening, Father, that you will draw them to you and that they will praise you and thank you for all that you're doing. We know that you're preparing the way. And so we just uh, com commission them to you, we commend them to you, and we ask, Father, that you will just clear the way and provide an amazing pathway for them as they, uh, as they plant Redeemer Church and, uh, and walk this out in obedience. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we celebrate? <clears throat> celebrate one more time. <clears throat> Sorry, Travis got to me. Um, but yeah, can we celebrate one more time? <clears throat> can somebody bring me a water? Can you guys bring me a water? Whoa. <clears throat> I want to apologize. So... But um, the yeah, thank you, Robin. Let's give Robin a hand. Why not? <clears throat> okay. So when we think about a send out and we think about a commissioning, it's kind of like, hey, I'll be praying for them. Because when they go, they're not going just themselves. I mean, there's an entire team of people, their families, multiple families. But what does this mean for us? What does this mean for us in this room, whether we're going, whether we're we're saying it means we are commissioned also. A commissioning just isn't a church plant. A commissioning is discipleship. We desire that we would truly fulfill scripture. So when we look at 2 Timothy 2, it's you then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that's in Christ Jesus and what you've heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust the faithful men who will be able to teach others also. That passage goes on to talk about an athlete. The passage goes on to talk about a soldier. But it also talks about a farmer. So as you know, I'm going to emphasize the farmer. Okay? A devoted follower of Jesus is a faithful farmer. It's the hardworking farmer who ought to have the first share of crops. Is there any farmers in here? Maybe like one. And they're not going to raise their hand and be like, oh, you know, because it's not about them. And they're probably thinking right now as they're here, there's these other things to do. Not as many farmers anymore because it's a lot of work. If you eat today, thank a farmer. I said, if you eat today, thank a farmer, amen. If you eat today, thank a farmer. But that word hardworking comes from a Greek word. It means to labor to the point of exhaustion. See, as a farmer, there's no sick days. There's no PTO. There's no, uh, I just need kind of a day for me, me time, you know. I need to reflect on some things. If you're a farmer, there's no allergies. At least my dad didn't allow them. I'm like, Dad, I think I have allergies. He goes, shut up, take some bread and drill and get in the tractor. I mean, that's literally how it was handled. And somebody like, he said, shut up. Yeah, you should have heard what else he said. Um, <laughs> but there's no like, oh, well, I'm not really feeling it today. Like, the rain might be coming. You've got to get the ground ready. You've got to prep the soil. You've got to do the work. You've got to till the ground. Because there's a harvest that you're praying towards. So when you think about to label to the point of exhaustion, it sure makes that list of like, I'm looking at this because it's convenient for me, or here's the kind of church that I would like to attend. No, if we're devoted followers of Jesus, if we're truly being a devoted follower, we'll be faithful like the farmer, and it isn't about us. It's providing for others. There is a harvest that's coming. There is eternity that awaits. There is a time that's coming where there's going to be no more time. No more time to share the gospel. No more times that you could walk across the street and share with a friend. No more texts that you could possibly send. There's no more time to maybe go invite them because there's no more time. Are you laboring? We're to make disciples that make disciples and we're to be healthy churches that plant healthy churches. I wanna show you a picture that means a lot to me. You can probably guess which one I am. I'm the one in the middle, uh, but you've got my dad in the striped shirt and this man on the left, his name is Clifford, Clifford Clark. He planted a church in Garden City, Kansas, a place that most people aren't gonna go, but it was that church that was the process that my family came to know the Lord. So he was retiring from ministry this day. And my, and my dad said, hey, we need to go. And our whole family went. I've been dating my wife about a month at this time and she even went. 
because we wanted to honor the person that brought the gospel to a forgotten and unnoticed city. And we have a community. We are a people that are to go. We're to gather, yes. We're to scatter, yes. And we're to matter, to make an eternal difference in the lives of people. So I want to take the opportunity this morning to commission you. So would you stand wherever you happen to be in this room? If you're online, just also listen as this is a commissioning. And I'm going to share some things that might sound a little bit familiar. You are commissioned to study and to teach God's word. You are commissioned to observe what our Lord commands. You are commissioned as a church and as followers of Jesus to love one another. You are commissioned to bear one another's burdens. You are commissioned to make disciples that make disciples. You are commissioned to plant churches. You are commissioned to evangelize and tell other people about Jesus. You are commissioned to visit orphans and widows in their time of need, for that's pure and true religion. You are commissioned to not forsake gathering together. You are commissioned to be sacrificial, to be generous, and to meet one another's needs. You are commissioned to admonish one another, redirecting and correcting one another in Love God, in this moment right now, I pray that our hearts are sensitive to you, that we are moved to surrender. God, it is not about us, and loving and leading is always right, but it's not easy. And I pray with, that we would embrace the labor, we'd embrace the work, we'd embrace the harvest. God, we lift up Redeemer Church to you. We pray for the seed that's being planted, that imperishable seed, the soil that we believe in, the season that we're in as a church body and in our community. We believe, we desire that all would come to repentance in you. But God, it's not just Redeemer. We pray for the disciples in this room, the people that follow you with their life, that they would be stirred. They would be a regeneration, a rededication in their heart to remember All that matters is what we do for you. All that's ever going to touch eternity is eternal work that involves you. What's done for you will last. God, we pray to be sent, apostelos, to go forth, to be sent on mission. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Please sing in reflection.